Bandy, bandy, banana, fan, fan. Okay. All right. So as I was mentioning, at the beginning of the year, we did problems like this. We didn't talk about the limits, but all Harrison we looked at was, hey, I'm going to give you a piecewise function. Can you evaluate for f and negative 1? And I said, do not plug in negative 1 into both equations, because you guys have to understand this piecewise function is basically two functions combined together um, to make one general function. And each of these equations have domains that are restricted. And it's very important to understand the restriction. Now, we can be able to graph these and I'll you know, do, solve this problem with graphing, but you don't necessarily have to know what the graph looks like. But it is helpful. This is, uh, let's graph 2x minus 1. Now, forget about the restriction for a second. 2x minus 1 has a, um, has a y-intercept of negative 1 and then a slope of up to over 1, something we learned in algebra 1. And then it looks something like this. Now, the domain is restricted. It says, I only want you to graph this for, or I only want this function to be used for values of x that are greater than 0. Well, the x values, the x-axis, is only greater than 0 when it's at the y-axis over, right? So everything to the left of the y-axis is negative x values, which are not a part of this function. You guys agree? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase that. And it also said x is greater than 0, not equal to. So I'm going to create a nice little dot, because it's an open point. It's not closed. The next one I look at is x squared plus 1. You say, oh, x squared, that's that nice little parabola. Plus 1 just means it's being shifted up 1, right? Well, rather than doing a perfect parabola, I only need to graph this for when x is less than 0. So if I was going to do a nice parabola here, I don't need to graph everything that's positive. I just need to do the negative version. Okay. So again, what we're looking for is what is the value of the function at negative 1? And if you plug in negative 1 into both equations, it makes no sense to plug it in over here. Why would you plug negative 1 into that function? This function is only defined for positive values, right? So it makes no sense to plug negative 1 into the top equation. We only want to plug negative 1 into this, this equation because this is the equation for all values of x that are less than or equal to 0. So all you guys had to do is plug it into this equation. Negative 1 squared is 1, plus 1 is 2. Gotcha? OK. The next one, limit as x is approaching 0 from the left. Now, this is kind of related to what we did here, is if you guys look at this, from the left, which equation are we talking about from the left? The x squared plus 1, right? And the reason being is, for the left of 0 is all values that are less than 0. So that means this is going to be the left hand, right? You don't even need to know. I could give you crazy equations. And if you know, oh, x is less than 0, that's the left-hand notation, right? So again, I can just plug what value are we approaching. We're looking for the value that it's going to equal. So in this case, I'm just going to plug in 0 into that equation. So I have 0 squared plus 1 equals 1. And then for the right-hand equation, right, you would see if I'm approaching 0 from the right hand, I'm following this function, right? And the reason why is because all values that are greater than 0 are this one. So let's just plug in 0 there equals negative 1. Now, I want to show you some mathematical notation, because the last question I'm going to ask you, or the last question that's up there, is find the general limit. And remember, guys, the general limit only exists if the left and the right hand limits are the same, correct? So. Mathematically, it looks like this. The limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x has to equal the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x. Now, thankfully, we already found the limit from the left, Mason, which was 1. And we found the limit from the right, which was negative 1. And since these are not the same, it does not exist. Now, again, you might say, Ms. McClogan, I can just look at the graph. Why do I need, why are you showing this math? Well, because again, I did the graph for you. And I'm doing an easy examples that I could use in the graph. But again, you could use the same understanding to apply to more difficult equations that you don't know what the graph looks like, right? And you could just apply the math from there, all right? But that's, that's about it. Now, one last question. Now, this is, discon this is a discontinuous, right? It's discontinuous by a? 